it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I'm going to be working way outside my comfort zone. I'm going to be doing some mixed media and if you watch my channel you know I don't do mixed media. I'm basically scared of it. So I guess you can say this is a video which is mixed media for beginners and to my surprise it was much easier than I thought and I love the results. So here's what I'm going to be using. I have material from Vicki Booten's Sweet Rush collection, along with that Wave Stencil, which is also from Sweet Rush as well. In addition to that, I have Foundation's Mixed Media Paper from Vicki Booten, which I absolutely love. I'll talk more about that throughout the process. And all of these products are available at the Scrapbook Nerd online shop. So I'm going to link up the shop along with everything I use in the description box below. So let's jump right in. Here's what's on my desk, and I want to show you I don't really have that much mixed media material. My jumping off point is that wave paper, and I also have a wave stencil, both from the Sweet Rush collection. This is my favorite product here. It's the Foundations Mixed Media Paper from Vicki Booten. It's a 140 pound weight, super heavy duty. I didn't have to gesso it, and it didn't work. That's a big bonus for me when it comes to mixed media. For inks, I selected three inks, and I have three colors from Stampin' Up, Tempting Turquoise, Balmy Blue, and Pear Pizzazz. I have a little squirt bottle there, a blending brush, and a roll of paper towels. That's it. So now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So first I want to tell you I watched Vicki Booten on a Facebook Live. She was doing it for Scrapbook and Cards Today for their sampler Facebook page. And I watched her do this technique. I thought it was easy. I figured I would give it a try. And when I went to try it after watching the video, I decided to turn on my camera and I figured if it turned out I would do a video for you and if it didn't, no big deal. So this is truly my first attempt. What I'm showing you here is I took my ink, that was the darkest ink, and I basically inked up my stencil almost like a stamp and then I squirted it three times with water. At this point, I place it on my page. I don't want to move it. I sponged it up with a bit of paper towel. And now I'm going to come in with two different inks. These are two lighter inks. And I'm using a blending brush. So I'm starting with the lighter color, which is Balmy Blue. And I'm just inking up in some of the areas within these waves. And then what I will do is come in with the other one, Pear Pizzazz. Now I got to tell you what's going through my mind at this point. Like I mentioned earlier, I watched the video, then I went to do this. And as I'm doing this, I'm asking myself, did I miss a step? Did I do something wrong? So every step along the way, I had really no idea what I was doing. But I must say, one piece of advice from Vicki Booten was, basically, these weren't her words, but essentially the message was, who cares? The worst thing that can happen is that you make a mess. So it's only paper and I kept that in my mind and I'm so glad I did. So once again, you saw there, I inked up my stencil. I squirted it with a bit of water. I'm placing it on my page, hoping not to move it when it's on there. I just dabbed it with that paper towel. And once again, I'm coming in with this blending brush and adding a bit of ink, starting with the balmy blue, then coming in with the green. Now again, were these Vicky steps? At this point, I had no idea. I was just kind of winging it, but every time I lifted the stencil, I was absolutely thrilled with my results. There's another thing that's going through my mind here. Now I am a clean and graphic scrapbooker, so I don't like things to look too messy, and I really am appreciating the white space around this mixed media. So I want to maintain that. And that is especially nerve wracking for me here when I'm doing the third stencil. So once again, I'm putting the ink on it. And there's another thing I want to mention. These stencils have like a rectangle border around the edges. And I did not want that to show up on my page. So you see me coming in there after I added water and just kind of wiping off the edges because I don't want there to be a big rectangle block around my stencil. 
So at this point, I am a bit nervous because I do want to maintain that white space. So I'm liking what I'm seeing on the page, but I'm really scared I'm going to ruin it. So once again, I'm placing that stencil down, hoping that I still have some white around my mixed media, dabbing my stencil, then once again, coming in with this blending brush and adding a bit of ink, starting with the balmy blue and then coming in with the green. Now, I absolutely am thrilled and loved the results. Now, when I start working on this page, and you'll see me do that in a moment, I did start working on it the following day because after I did this, I had some errands to do. So I went out, I came back later in the day, I touched it and it smudged a bit. So I didn't want to ruin my page. I didn't take any chances. I waited until the next day. And you can see I did create a frame around the page, just a little tiny narrow one with that wave paper. And I gutted the paper from behind it. There is a tutorial on my channel where I explain how to do that. So that will be linked up below. Once again, I'm showing you this foundations paper because if you look at my page, it's perfectly flat. I absolutely love that. No warping whatsoever. And it's nice and white. So I don't have a, a coating of gesso on it either. I love that foundations paper. I also matted my photo, double matted my photo in advance. So I used that blue paper from the foundation page that I got it and I put white behind the photo. And I also added a few extra layers of hidden cardstock. I am showing you when I add layers of hidden cardstock, it's really scrap cardstock. That was a piece of cartabella paper that I didn't like. It was probably part of a collection and I just used it to hide behind my photo, just to raise up the photo a little bit by adding a few extra layers. I'm also showing you I have some paper handy. I did end up bringing in that green paper, which is from the Vicki Boot and Sweet Rush collection as well, because when I saw that green ink, I knew I wanted to introduce that green there. I showed you as well, I have a pile of embellishments from this collection, but what I did do was kind of select anything that was in that aqua color and green, because I knew that's what I would be focusing on. So I am ready to jump right into the embellishment process, which is absolutely amazing because that mixed media does a lot of the work already. Now, what I'm going to be doing in this video is creating an exploding photo mat, which is a little bit different than a layered photo mat. Basically, when I create what I call an exploding photo mat, essentially, I do have a bit of paper behind my photo, but mostly what comes out from my photo are cut apart sheets and ephemera. And in the end, I come in with some finishing touches like stickers and possibly smaller stuff. So what you see me doing right there is just kind of building up from behind the photo. And all I did was add one piece of that green paper. And now I'm coming in with different bits and pieces of ephemera. And I'm essentially creating a vertical line over on the right hand side of the page. So I'm building up and down and I'm really liking the green. So I have that word hello there. I have that palm tree sticking up behind. So I'm going to want to later on introduce that bright green elsewhere. I would also like to point out that I'm really working within the layers. So I'm working behind the photo mats, behind the paper layers, and that helps create texture and adds definitely to the layered look. Now at this point, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I definitely want a title. I have the alphas from this sweet brush collection, which are actually perfect, but for some reason I'm not feeling it. And I'm looking at that piece of ephemera that says, today's moments are tomorrow's memories, which is actually going to be my journaling box. But what you see me doing with it is I'm cutting out with a circle die that part of the journaling box. My plan is to basically crimp this up to make it more title worthy. And I will often do that with pieces of ephemera. So what I did was I cut myself out a larger circle in that green paper, also in that white heavy duty cardstock. And my plan basically is to mat that semicircle with the words on it with the green, I'm going to put the white behind it just so that it solidifies it a bit. And then essentially, I'm going to 
place it back in that journaling box where I cut out that circle, but it's going to be popped up on foam adhesive. And it's just going to stand out a bit more as a title. And you may have noticed as well, I did add a bit of ink around that title area as well. And I used the same ink that I used on the foundation page. The color I used was balmy blue. Now what I do decide to do at this point is add a bit of ink to a few of the layers, but not all of them. So I'm ending up doing it with the green paper that's behind there. I'm going to do it with that cut apart sheet that goes on the side there that says all oh, on the agenda today or something like that. Later on, you're going to see I end up coming in and doing it to the journaling box as well, the part that peeks out at the top and at the bottom, but I don't do it right now. I also came in with my phone and snapped a photo because I have a lot of things going on here and now I want to adhere them together. And sometimes it's a good idea just to snap a photo to refer to it just in case you forget where you place the things. You can see as well, I'm adhering everything behind the photo, basically building out from my photo, and then I'm going to place it to the page. And for me, that's what I call an exploding photo mat or my exploding photo mat technique. And the reason why I do this is because I'm building out and once it's nice and big and all full behind the photo, then I can decide where to place it on the page. So I actually adhere it and to be perfectly honest, I do it too soon because the journaling box at the bottom, which is where my title is gonna go as well, isn't adhered behind the exploding photo mat. And once I adhere this down, I'm making sure everything is straight and I'm all happy with it. Then I'm placing that journaling box there. And when I do it, I feel that it's too low on the page. So what you're going to see me do is lift up the whole thing. But that is also the beauty of an exploding photo mat. Everything is already adhered together. So if you do have to lift it up, it's pretty easy. It kind of comes up in one clump. Anyway, when I put it back down on the page, I felt that things were a little bit crooked. Essentially, it ended up being the photo. So I turned off the camera and adhered it, made sure everything was straight. That was also when I inked the journaling box with that blue ink as well. And now you saw that I added the title there and I added some foam adhesive. So basically, I am almost done here aside from my journaling. Now, I do want to add a bit of that lime green over on the left hand page. So I go into the sticker sheet, find myself a few word stickers, put it on the photo there. And now I have that hint of green over there on the left. And I'm really, really happy with that. I do play around with a few extra pieces here, but to be perfectly honest, I absolutely love this page. So that is my finished layout. And all I ended up doing off camera was a bit of journaling. You could see there that there at the bottom. Anyway, I'm absolutely thrilled with this layout. It ended up being much easier than I thought. I'm so happy I decided to work outside my comfort zone. Don't get me wrong, I have embraced my clean graphic style, but sometimes it is fun to try something different. And for me, that means letting go of straight lines and getting a bit messy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, Scrapbooking Quebec, I'd be absolutely thrilled. The same thing with our channel for the Scrapbook Nerd. We have videos going up every week. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.